Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Today is January 6th, 2012. I am your host with NoSpinNewSource.com, Carrie Lanumi, coming at you with your monthly report. The first time in 2012, and the first time ever, not just in MP3 format here on the website, but also coming at you streaming in 1080p full high definition. That's right. We're moving on up, and we're moving onward. So, with that being said, and just reiterating the fact that we are proudly serving 17 nations and 5 continents all across the globe, we just want to say thank you here at No Spin News Source to each and every one of you for making that possible in 37 states. So, here in the country. So we have news to discuss as always. We have lots of variables on the table. We have, well, the indefinite detention bill no longer faces veto threat from the White House. Why is that? Simply because as of the 31st of December, so-called President Obama signed into play this act, the National Defense Authorization Act of 2012 from Hawaii. Now this is a very interesting and controversial bill, folks, as we've been discussing for some time, not just here on the website, through the blog, through what would be other uh, forums and things that we've been up to and doing online, offline, creation of uh, speeches and different things, so on and so forth, that we've been discussing this. But the Obama administration ultimately has been playing games. I mean, we all know that, right? They've been playing lots of games. But we see this increasing like never before. We see what would be senators such as Levin on one side of the line trying to blame the Obama administration for the language and the statutes specified within the National Defense Authorization Act specifically pertaining to what would be the permanent detention of what would be any even not just foreign but now United States born citizen who is believed that's right just simply a suspected individual regarding being linked to somehow some way terrorism now anybody who's a real terrorist somebody who's not in the interest of our nation and that is here to destroy infrastructure to bomb places and to do bad evil doer deeds obviously you know, we don't really need these people in the world, and uh, they're not doing anything but wrong and bad, and they're up to no good. But everybody, according to our Constitution, that's right, everybody deserves to be tried, deserves to have a trial. We have something called due process rights in this nation, and that's what makes us superior. Just one of the elements that make us superior to the rest of the world is because of that, is because of those due process rights. This isn't the Salem Witch Trials anymore, where we accuse the next door neighbor of something. We believe, we have a hunch or a funny feeling, and then they're supposed to get taken away. That's not how it works. Even if individuals as such are guilty of terrorism, so be it. But they deserve to be tried, found guilty, and then reap the whirlwind of the reprimands and repercussions that ensue from breaking those moral and ethical laws. So with that being stated, we have a president who simply put is making sure that any way possible that if he has a situation where someone gets in his way, his political agenda for what he's trying to accomplish, they will disappear into Guantanamo or other secret gold gag type style prisons around the country. So here in what would be this article here of the Huffington Post from the 14th of last month, it states, we have concluded that the language does not or constrain the president's ability to collect intelligence, incapacitate dangerous terrorists and protect American people, the statement said. Although it added, if the uncertainty added, that if the uncertainty raised by the legislation does not impede investigations, the White House expects lawmakers to write a fix. One of the major changes was shifting to the White House the responsibility for determining who does not have to be detained forever by the military. In an earlier version of the bill, the Department of Defense made the call. 
And while the bill makes the military the default investigator for Islamic, they say, they always say it's Islamic, but the actual what would be statutes within the bill doesn't say anything about Islam. It says anybody, including U.S., explicitly United States citizens. So they always say it's about the Islam, it's about the terrorist overseas, and this and that. Well, when you hear it, someone else getting mistreated, someone else is getting abused, someone else is getting raped and pillaged, well, it tends to be a little bit easier for people when it's somewhere else in a distant land, when it's not here. But when people realize that, no, this has nothing to do with Islam, this has to do with United States citizens, this has to do with you and me. Once people see that, then it's out of the box. That's right. It says, if you have a problem with the indefinite detention, that is a problem with current law, said Representative Adam Smith, the top Democrat of the House Armed Services Committee from here in Washington State. The problems that have, that people have, and I share some of them, are with existing law. Not with this bill, he says. Defeat this bill and that will not change a piece of that existing law that we've heard about that we all should be concerned about. So, anyway, it gets a little confusing, but the point of the matter is, and I can go into some of these more variables here and some of these other articles that are more recent, regarding this as it's now been passed where a few weeks ago it was passed by what would be the House and the Senate but finally it has been placed through Obama's agenda now on the table and now United States law. So Obama's change, that's right. Remember that change that he said that he was going to bring? We had the eight years of Bush and he promised change. So as the RT article shows right here, Obama's change from kidnapping and torture which would have been under George W. Bush, to now assassinations, as typified by Al Yawaki, his 16-year-old son, and so on and so forth. Al Yawaki is a suspected terrorist, but he's a United States citizen. What's interesting about Mr. Al Yawaki and what would be his 16-year-old son is they were both put to death. That's right. Not after going through trial, but what would be through the results of a airstrike by predator drones. So you have United States citizens already being, not just detained, but already being murdered without ever even going before a trial, without having due process rights, without ever having an attorney or anything else. So you want to change? You got it. It might not be what you can believe in, but you better believe in what is being said and done right now has nothing to do with the Mayan calendar or anything else regarding 2012. You see the legislation that's been coming onto the table, the direction of government and where they've been heading and taking this nation and the direction we're going in general, you don't have to be a psychic or even halfway in tuned with what would be the flavor of the times and who and what and where we are today, nation, globally, so on and so forth, to be able to see if we stay the course, it's not going to be a fun one, to put it mildly. So, in the RT article here, regarding Obama's change from kidnapping and torture to assassination, if you Google that, I highly recommend you do. RT has a lot of good articles for you. The promise to scrap his prosecutors, excuse me, predecessors, hardliner war on terror policies, which helped Barack Obama win presidential election, is apparently off the table. The political reality is that the current administration is doing quite the opposite thing. Long before he became U.S. president or winner of a Nobel Peace Prize, Barack Obama was a constitutional law professor. During his election campaign, he vowed to reverse the abuses and policies of his predecessor, George W. Bush. Three years later, many civil rights advocates who once cheered, yes, we can, unquote, are finding themselves disillusioned. Not only... Quote, not only has the Obama administration blocked torture accountability and refused to investigate and prosecute, he has basically maintained indefinite detention. He has revived military commissions as well as expanded targeted killings. They've increased under the Obama administration manifold, and he's even authorized the killing of U.S. citizens, unquote, explains Maria LaHood from the Center for Constitutional Rights. 
and she's discussing there the killing of U.S. citizens regarding what would be al Yawaki and his 16-year-old son with those drone attacks that I just mentioned. So, the article continues. World-renowned author and scholar Noam Chomsky believe, believes the Obama administration has changed gears and accelerated illegal practices into what would be overdrive. There's a shift between Bush's policies and the Obama's on this. Bush's policy was to kidnap people, take them to Guantanamo or Bagram or other torture chamber and try to extract some information from them. Obama's policy is just simply to kill them. They're killing them all over the world and the Bin Laden assassination was a cease point, a case point, excuse me, he told RT. Another was the drone killing of al Yawaki, an American-born cleric. President Obama described this man as the leader of an external operations for Al-Qaeda in the Arabian Peninsula. Apart from those 200 more killed by U.S. UAVs, the number of drone strikes during the first two years during the Obama administration exceeded the total carried out during Bush's eight years. If it says, quote, if President McCain were doing the exact same thing that Barack Obama is doing, he would have been denounced by a lot of liberals. It's one of those dangerous moments in the United States history. We saw it a bit with Clinton in the 90s, it says, where a Democrat campaign and pledged to change the country and the world has actually pushed the right-wing agenda further forward than the Republicans could have ever done if they had power. As Obama gears up for his re-election campaign, civil liberties groups that believed his words for the first time around are now left to judge this commander-in-chief on his actions. And we all know actions and words can be two different things. So, you can talk the talk, but do you walk the walk, Mr. President? That's the question. Or anybody else that's in government. Rick Larson, like our uh, so-called congressman or whomever that's following the direction of Bush and Obama, Black Bush, and capitulating with these policies. If it's our congressman or if it's yours, it's time for impeachment. So the article continues to elaborate on some of the basic facts that I've been discussing here today. Now we have what would be a response from our representative, Congressman Rick Larson which is in his sixth term right now, uh, which has completely capitulated, if you look at his track record, with what would be the history and legacies of capitulating, as I mentioned, to the downfall of the United States of America by kissing the butt and going along with Bush and Black Bush, Barack Obama. And what would be, Mr. Larson typifies this. So in his response from December 17th, regarding the Defense Authorization Act. He states, quote, I supported the National Defense Authorization Act to strengthen our national security and support service members and their families. This bill provides our service members with the equipment and resources they need to protect our country. He goes on to state, the House of Representatives passed a version of the fiscal year 2011 National Defense Authorization Act in May, but the Senate was unable to pass its version of the legislation. The bill voted on today emerged from a bipartisan negotiations with leaders in the House and Senate who removed many controversial measures in an effort to help secure a swift passage for the House and Senate. Unfortunately, members of the Senate objected to language supported by Representative Rick Larson and the earlier version of the defense bill that would have forced the Department of Defense to take into account the illegal subsidies received by Airbus in the tanker competition and this language was not included in the final bill. That's a little sidebar there trying to make it look good since we got a lot of Boeing interest here in our area, the company Boeing. Uh, which is here. So he's making it look good. He's protecting the military. He's protecting the Boeing workers. Anyway, he goes on to elaborate. Quote, 
I am disappointed that the defense bill does not include language forcing the Department of Defense. Oh, okay. Uh, excuse me. I read that part. Although this bill is not perfect, it includes critical priorities for our military. This bill invests in the tools needed to crack down on terrorism and keep the worst weapons out of the worst hands by increasing our efforts to secure loose materials that are nuclear around the world. This will take care of our service members and their families by raising military pay 1.4% and allowing TRICARE beneficiaries to keep their kids on their health care coverage until the age 26. And this bill includes acquisition reform provisions that will save taxpayers billions of dollars on defense purchases and get needed equipment to our troops faster. I urge the Senate to act quickly to support this important legislation. Piece of crap. Oh, excuse me. Legislation here. Unquote. That Mr. Larson goes on to say. So, Larson capitulates with this. See, he's on what would be one of these major committees regarding national defense. So he knows the language of this bill all too well. So for Mr. Larson to try to portray the image that this is in the defense of the nation state, that this is going to protect the interest of our troops, this is going to be a benefit to us all through various means, that it's going to make it toward crack down on terrorism and whatnot, so on and so forth. What does removing aspects of our Constitution have to do with fighting terror? That's my question. I mean, you know, you go back to Thomas Jefferson, and other what would be noble forefathers within the history of our nation, and they explicitly state that when you trade security, that's right, when you trade your freedoms for so-called security, you replace it with security, you get nor deserve neither. And that's what happens. This is typified by the Patriot Act. This is typified by these gold gag, FBI, sneak and peek searches. This is typified by secret gold gag prisons that you could be thrown in if all I do or your neighbor or whoever else calls up and calls in some suspicious activity to the federal government. That's all it takes. I think my neighbor's kind of weird. He had a couple of guys coming over with turbans on their heads and they were talking about the Constitution and some anti-American things against Obama. That's all it would take. And my neighbor may disappear, or yours. Is that where we want to live? A snitch and ditch society? A set another Salem witch trials? Is that where we want to live? No, it's not. Do you want to trade your freedom and your children's freedom for so-called security? So every time you go through the TSA, you could be not just patted down, have fingers potentially poked into your orifices, to be felt up on your genitalia? Is that security? Should we roll and smoke the Constitution now like a big old blunt on 420? Should we do that now for so-called security? I recommend that we don't. I feel perfectly safe going out and about and taking care of my business. Now, me personally, I carry a gun everywhere I go. I recommend you do too, if it's legal and you're in the United States. But, you know, and when you carry a gun on you, you don't feel like you have to have as much extra security because you know if things come down to it, you can take care of your own ass and assets. So, here we go. We need to can Rick Larson. He's in a sixth term. I think it's time for retirement. We're tired of trading freedoms. We're tired of trading the value of life. We're tired of trading the future generations for so-called stability when it's not working out. Bailout after bailout. Law after law that impedes upon our constitutional rights and absolutely breaks and cracks away at the foundation of the principles upon which our great nation was built upon. We don't need it. We don't need anybody who capitulates to this. My recommendation is this. We have major accountability from Bush to Obama and all these people in the government that support them knowingly and wittingly. I believe we should have a 
trial. That's right, an actual trial. Similar to that of the Nuremberg trial after what would be Nazi Germany and put these people through it. I don't believe in just hanging them up, stringing them up on trees. I don't believe in death penalty personally, but I do believe in prison. I do believe in accountability, and I do believe that we can utilize the strength within our law and the Constitution to get back our reputation, our integrity, our drive, and the beginning aspects of trust is being labeled as the beacon of hope and light once again. That's right, our nation, the United States of America. We are the greatest. We're the best. We are the one and only true nation state and republic upon this planet. And that is why we have to fight like hell to save it. Because if we crack here, the world will go into a new world order system of governance. And I assure you, that's when the hell, turmoil, and depopulation is really going to begin. So if you think things are nasty now for your small business, for what you're up to in life, if you think making your mortgage payment is difficult now, putting your kids through college in five years is going to be difficult with the projections you have now going the direction. Trust me, where we're heading if we stay the course, Obama, Bush's course, well, the days of 2011 and... Uh, first month here of 2012 will be some of the happiest days you may remember, as sad as that is to say, if we don't change the direction of this ship real, real fast. So, we have Rush Limbaugh labeled the president's actions as, quote, lawless uh, regarding uh, recent legislation and the comment made by Obama when he said, quote, when Congress refuses to act, and as a result, hurts the economy, it puts people at risk. But I have an obligation to act on behalf of the American people. Unquote. So setting the silly voice aside here of Obama, my emulation there. When Congress refuses to act, unquote, as a result, hurts the economy and puts our people at risk. Now that's a little sidebar to make it look good. Then I, the president says, have an obligation to act on behalf of the American people. He's letting you know, just like I've been saying for some time, he doesn't need Congress. Just like the president stated with Libya, he went to the United Nations. Congress is irrelevant now. That's where it's at. Not according to the Constitution, but according to this president. So when you have a president that directly labels his actions out of the grasp and control of what would be the Congress, what do you have? You have a self-declared dictatorship. That's right, self-declared dictatorship. And why don't we, as a matter of fact, go down here and uh, see what would be the real true side and change of Obama? We know that Obama's changed. So what kind of a change has he made? Well, let's find out. I hear he uh, grew a mustache recently. Let's see. Oh, there he is. Now this is an appropriate picture here. He has the Hitler mustache. And like he says, he's changed. I mean, he promised to change, right? Change you can believe it. He said he was the Messiah. The one. The Miracle Man. Remember that? The Miracle Man. Yeah, go back to YouTube that back in 2008, 2009. He was the one. The Messiah. The Miracle Man. Those are some of the things that he was labeled. Yeah, people on hands and knees and tears, knowing that this was a sign from heaven. That's what they said. Just because it was the first black man in office. So therefore, since we have a, a black man, it's guaranteed the poor middle class are going to be looked after. It's guaranteed Wall Street's going to be put to its knees. It's guaranteed that the, since he's a constitutional law professor and so much more sharper than old Bush, he can actually read a speech. People thought that the Constitution would be protected and our rights. It was going to be a change. Remember? The unitary executive and all these other doctrines. Guantanamo Bay, we're going to close them down. It's going to be a change you can believe in. No, it's change you damn well better believe in. And it's not the Obama portrayed change. It's the reality. Now, right here in the city of Arlington, where I live, just 45 uh, minutes north of Seattle, or in other parts of the nation, this has been a very controversial picture. 
Now this was created, this picture was, by members of the Lyndon LaRouche youth movement and whatnot, which I fully support 100%. I back them. I've acquired much vital information and understanding of geopolitics, the British Empire, and what is going on today through what would be Lyndon LaRouche, Jeffrey Steinberg, and uh, his crew that is around him in general including some of the younger members that I'm friends with still today, and I plan on maintaining that relationship for the rest of my life. But as I stated, this has been a controversial picture. This is something that people have not liked. This is something that's disgusted many people, and people don't understand it. Now, let's go into the variables of this real quick here before we move on to the rest of this show today. Ultimately, why does he have this mustache? You know who gave it to him. But why? Well, first of all, he's a narcissist, which Lyndon LaRouche labeled respectively and correctly years before anybody else did, which is the same psychological deterioration and illness that old Nero and Adolf Hitler had. So when you see how things play out from Nero fiddling when Rome burned to Adolf Hitler in the bunker scenario, we see things playing out. And as what would be this Congress is beginning to come down a bit on this president and things are not working out exactly the way he wants them to do. Seeing the people aren't loving him the way they did. He's not the miracle man or messiah anymore. That ultimately he's becoming rather reclusive as well. Even his uh, main bodyguard that he spends just as much time with as his own wife stated that he spends pretty much all of his time playing video games, playing board games with his kids, watching sports games, especially Chicago, such as the Bulls and baseball games. And that's what this freak does with his time in the White House. That's right. So he's spending time, our dollars and our time, playing PlayStation 3 and doing other things. That's where he's spending time with and doing. He tries to portray himself as some kind of a basketball and other store a, a saga uh, in his little stories and whatnot. And, you have people such as Charles Barkley that's came out and stated that he's personally played with Obama and he sucks, unquote. So, now, the actions of this president, besides the words, talk about the actions, have earned him this Hitler mustache. How is that? Well, let's look at what would be his health care act. Let's look at what would be the escalating war around the world, which is only serving to do what? He says he's trying to protect the interest here in the homeland. But that's not the case. You see, if he was really trying to protect us, he wouldn't be going around the world pissing everybody else off using our military. That's reality. Because the further he pushes this and escalates, and the more issues and conflicts that the United States finds themselves in, well, guess what? We're only pissing off more and more countries. That's reality. So as we make more and more enemies, our security is becoming compromised day by day, further and further. This is a major predicament. So these factors from pushing the war driver from what would be not dealing with science, we're shutting down and absolutely turning off the data to what would be much needed scientific programs and data that would be coming in from satellites in space to determine earthquake precursors and conditions for uh, forecasting these events and major weather uh, patterns and things, he's shutting them off from what would be Obamacare healthcare, which I stated months before it ever got passed, that ultimately that healthcare act would provide not more but less healthcare for the people that the elderly and what would be the youth, the two groups that need it the most, the children and the elderly would receive less, not more, more health care. So when you give less health care to people who need it, when you don't provide the foundation for a young man like myself or whomever to begin to do what's naturally in their DNA, which is to perpetuate the species, to start a family, to get grounded and to move forward and become financially and otherwise independent. When you take away these elements, what happens? People die. Simple as that. How do people die? Well, grandpa 
if he don't have those new pair of glasses that enables him to see, he's more likely to walk out in front of a bus or get in a car accident on his way home from the store tonight when it's after dark. That's reality. When you have people sitting around deciding whose life is more valuable regarding these HMOs and even now the White House entity through this Health Care Act that is deciding whose life is more valuable. That's right. So with some of these uh, aspects from transplants to whatever, you have people reviewing you and other people that are competing with you to get that liver or heart or whatever transplant. And they're deciding based upon factors of how much money you make, how old you are, and other factors, how valuable your life is and who is going to get whatever treatment. Now, who is to decide whose life is worth living and whose isn't? Who is to decide? How can we, human, mankind, morally, ethically justify putting a label on life and deciding whose life is valuable and whose is not? That's a slippery, slippery course that's on its way down to Nazi Germany very fast. So I have a couple forecasts here for you today. First of all, as we're now just beginning the fourth year of Obama's presidency, as we've only concluded three full years in the making, this president will, if he goes out or...